Hi. Okay, so I am working on a thank you gift to Neri um, to thank her for that beautiful bracelet that she sent me. And um, I thought I would just go ahead and do, I'm not going to do a process video on how I um, make this box, but um, I'm just going to go over kind of what I've done so far and then I'll come back with the finished product. Because um, this is going to be too time consuming. It's taking me too long to do this. This box was actually that white box that I got in my $25 Craigslist haul. I posted a video about that. It was a phenomenal Craigslist find that I, um, Craigslist find that I found. And, um, anyway, there was a, um, some metal leafing that was included in this white box. And it's just, you know, a card, not cardboard, um, like more like chipboard um, box. And I decided to alter this to um, include some laces. And um, so I've altered it and uh, what I did is I painted um, the just the edges that I thought would show. I didn't paint the entire box, just the edges around the edges and the corners that I thought um, you know, would show after I applied the paper because I knew I wanted to use the Keller Kurtz um, paper from the paper studio at Hobby Lobby. Love that paper pad. Um, so uh, I used the buttermilk Americana, just Americana craft paint and <clears throat> Uh, that is what I did and then I adhered all the paper around it so you know this is all from that paper pad beautiful beautiful paper love 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 it this piece with the damask and then the music notes behind it just beautiful and there's the back side and this is the bottom and I am going to seal all this with some kind of a protectant sealant something I don't know yet what I'm gonna do um, and then I did also do the inside as well so just some more of that paper that's been included in here all around um, I'm gonna trim this out further just to finish it off and what I've got here is folded cardstock that I folded like so and adhered it to the base of this top before I laid this paper out. And then what I did is I cut a notch that matched this, cut a notch out of that paper, and then adhered it down. And all I used was some PVA, watered PVA glue to get all these papers adhered down. Now this Keller Kurtz paper is super thin. So, um... I did have some tearing in here, like you can see right here, there's some tearing that happened when I was trying to make sure all the air bubbles were out um, and I was smoothing everything out. So there is, you know, a little bit, but I think it just kind of adds to the, you know, shabby look of the box. So anyway, but the reason why I did this is because I plan on including um, some of my handmade stick pins. And um, so I'm going to slot, you know, stick those in through here um, to include, include those in so that when you open the box, it'll be the stick pins here and then all the laces um, here. Now, um, oh, and then the final thing on this box so far, because I haven't even started to decorate this yet. <clears throat> I've just gotten the base done. Um, this is a sky blue pink closure. Um... And the other thing about that is that um, this came with little bitty nails because it's mainly intended for like a, you know, a box, like a wood box. But um, because this is so thin, you know, such thin, um, yeah, whatever, <laughs> it, um, you know, I couldn't use the nails because you would nail, you know, the little screw things that came with it in there but because they would stick out and wouldn't stay I had to just use brads instead so I did secure the closures top and bottom with some brads I used some gold uh, alcohol ink just so that it would match the closure and um, then what I did is because it still kind of you know flops around a little bit what I did is I put some uh, glossy accents into the holes here just so these wouldn't move around and I did the same thing on these right here so um so it still moves around a little bit but at least I know it's secure with that and then I'm going to be going over this with like some kind of a trim piece just to, like I said to finish that off 
so like I said, I'll come back uh, when this is all, you know, decorated and done. Um, I just kind of wanted to go over the process to this point because all that's left now is to decorate it. Um, and then what I did is I printed out some of these spools. This is an Etsy store. Um, I'll try to remember to post a link down below. Um, if I forget, just just message me if you're interested, and I'll I'll respond eventually. Um, but there were these um, a page of these ribbon spools, um, and I printed this out, um, cut everything out. Well, first I attached it to some chipboard, so it is kind of thick because I wanted there to be some you know, I wanted this to be sturdy enough that I could wrap some ribbon around these spools. So I have like nine of these. And, um, so anyway, I took the printouts, attached it to some chipboard, um, and then I painted the backside the exact same color that I used to paint around the, the edges of this box, which is that buttermilk color, um, because I thought it matched the color of the printout very well. So that is what I used to, to paint the, uh, chipboard, and I made sure I went all around the edges as well. Um, so nothing was exposed as far as that raw chipboard. Um, and then I wrapped uh, the laces and I'm going to centenary. And just um, secured it with a little um, sewing pin that's got a little pearl top on top. So. Um, so anyway, so I do plan on, you know, putting all these laces and stuff in this box. And um, so when she opens it, all the stick pins will be here. Then all the lace bowls will be in here. And, uh, yeah, so that's it so far. So I'll be back with the finished product so you can see everything once it's all done and put together. Okay, I got really behind with um, projects over the uh, holidays. So anyway, um, so I'm just now getting around to finishing up this box that I did for Neri as a thank you gift. So... This is the completed box, and um, I, <clears throat> excuse me, I um, just use a lot of different embellishments here. Um, there are quite a few, um, you know, different manufacturers, different flowers, so I'll just kind of go over it real quickly. Um, you know, these are like some I Am Roses flowers. Um, some of them I sprayed with the... Um, Here it is. Creme brulee creme. Creme brulee. Ugh, oh my gosh. Creme brulee cream. Um, Lindy Stanton Gang. And because um, they were just too white. And um, some satin ro uh, flowers. And I can't remember if I got that from Lily's um, store or um, Natasha's. I can't remember. But anyway, because I, I buy from just so many online stores. Um, from a lot of YouTubers here, so um, it's hard to keep them straight. But um, anyway, <clears throat> so there's these are satin uh, flowers. Um, I have some of those leaves underneath the Prima leaves, and um, a little doily that I got from Julie's store, the paper bag lady. Uh, some Prima flower bits that I just stuck a Prima bread through. That's from the Printery collection. Um, a Butterbee scrap piece for the center of the clock here um, with a little flat back pearl. This is a uh, Prima light bulb. And um, this is a nest that I got from eBay um, or Etsy. There was an Etsy store that had like 30 of these for like 10 bucks. So, um, but they're in China, so it took forever to get it. Um, there's a Lavish Laces um, fabric flower um, at the very base of this and then I wrap just some of that funky yarn fiber around it um, around the, the resin nest um, here's a spray that I got from the piece by piece um, some little itty bitty um, Prima flowers um, tucked in there um, this is a bead cap from Again, this is from uh, Butterbee Scrap Monique's store, Butterbee Scrap. She can hardly see it now, um, but it's one of those really um, wide bead caps, metal 
filigree bead caps. Um, and another rolled satin. I think I got this one, this flower from Beady Bomb Bomb, her store. Again, I sprayed it with that um, Lindy Stamp Gang spray just so it would match the project a little bit better. And, um, and anyway, it's tucked into that bead cap. So like I said, you can hardly even see that on here, I think. So, um, and then there's some rolled book paper here in French, um, from a French book I have. Um, so I just rolled it up, distressed the edges and, um, stuck that on there. And, oh, this is a, the, Tim Holtz bird that I die cut and this is just a little tag that I had and um, I really glossy accented the heck out of it. I distressed this little um, satin bow with the pearl trim here in the center. Um, and I distressed it using the um, big brush pen and when the glossy accents got into it, it really spread that color out. So it was a pure white bow, so it really um, dirtied that up. So, um, and then this is uh, one of those key um, pieces that I got from Wholesale Accessory. LA and that big jewelry haul that I got. Um, I think that was a hair clip. Um, so I tore that, you know, apart just to get the top key piece. And um, this is a Michaels frame that um, I put, the color was a little off from what I wanted and um, so I put some uh, Inca Gold, rubbed some of that on it. This is um, an image from Astrid McLean. Um, um, she has a lot of free downloads. Um, she's got to be like probably one of my most favorite artists. She's in the top five, that's for sure. But anyway, she has every now and then free downloads. And um, so I got that from one of her downloads. And I love the image um, because the little vintage gr girl is holding the uh, robin's nest of eggs. And, you know, kind of went with this uh, paper with the uh, birds and stuff. So... I really like that. Anyway, I think that's it. Um, you know, you just kind of do like an assemblage with all your, you know, little bits and pieces, and that's what I did here. And the back side is um, just the uh, papers with um, big, these are, I don't remember what millimeter these are, but they're really big um, flat back pearls that I've used as little um, box feet. Then here's the back side of the paper and this trim I've got two layers of trim here um, and I don't remember where I got this either this may be from no, I don't know I'm not even going to attempt to guess where I got that um, but anyway um, and then there's um, some more ribbon here that has where you can you know thread um, lace through it and instead of threading lace I th threaded the um, flat back pearls um, to it, through it. So there's that ribbon, I mean lace, there's that lace trim right here and then I took this and kind of seamed it on top of the other just to finish it off and then I just went around the entire box. So there's the other side and then for the closure this was a sky blue pink um, closure and it was a really bright gold so I took some um, antique white um, craft paint I don't think it's gonna stay on there <laughs> very uh, very long because I didn't seal it or anything because this has a lot of moving parts um, so but it was just too bright gold so I did you know put that paint on it um, just so it would match the project a little bit better um, and everything is attached with uh, brads so it is a little loose here but it is definitely on because what I did on the other side um, I secured everything with glossy accents and filled the holes where the brads come through so it's in there good it just like I said it just kind of moves around a little bit but anyway and then you open up the box and here is the inside so this is the inside cover let me come out Oops, wrong way, as usual. So, 
Um, <clears throat> so I showed you um, in the previous segment, you know, how I did these little spools. So I just wrapped some of my vintage laces and some other laces as well. There's some that aren't vintage in here. Um, but for the most part, there are a lot of vintage laces in here. And um, I secured them with a little um, sewing pin. And then there's some extra the laces that were too wide to, um, you know, to fit around the spool. So I just kind of had to set it in here. And um, I did line. Let me take this out. I did line with the paper as well. I'm not going to take all this out. And then put some of the flat back pearl trim in there as well. I did that on this side as well as this side. And um, so everything's finished off, even around the sides on the inside with that paper. Ah. Okay, and then um, I did take some more uh, vintage lace and um, kind of just um, border stripped on this cover here. Oh, and then also where the brads come through, I did put some uh, filigree pieces down here as well as up here just to cover up where those brads um, shoved through on the other side. And... <clears throat> Then this was just a border strip that I had. Um, I distressed it with my Zutter and then um, some vintage photo distress ink. And it says vintage love is forever and ever and ever and ever. And um, kind of fitting because I'm sending some vintage laces here. But And then, of course, this is, you know, how I did my stick pins. So I did that little fold where, you know, I don't know if you can see that, but... Um, and then I just stuck like four stick pins in here. I've since seen Neri um, get um, some stick pins from, uh, oh, and I can't remember her name. She's a really awesome artist. Um, I think it's my passion for paper. Um, so, of course, I'd already started this project when I saw her get those stick pins from her. And <clears throat> I was like so intimidated <laughs> after seeing that video. I was like, oh, my gosh, I don't even want to send stick pins now. Um because mine totally pale in comparison uh, to hers. Um, I haven't been doing beading for very long. So, um, but like I said, I'd already started this project. So, <laughs> I just thought, what the heck, I'll just go ahead and send them anyway. So, that is the box. Um, so, I have, you know, a few more things that um, are going to her as well. Okay, why isn't this closing now? It has been closing, no problem. There we go. And, um, yeah, and then it just, you know, closes and there's like a little, you know, catch here. It just turns so it'll stay closed. So anyway, um, uh, pretty happy with the way that this turned out. And uh, I hope Neri likes it. And um, I will see you guys later. Okay, so this is going to be it on my thank you gift to Neri. I just finished my thank you card slash tag and um so i'm going to share that and um let me see let me just kind of quickly go through what i did here um i did kind of want to make it a little hanging tag so i did um put some eyelets in attached a uh, jump ring and then a little bit of chain so that it can hang this is uh double-sided and uh what i did is i um used the same paper line that I used on the box just so everything coordinates. I did um, sew after I put the base layer down. Oh, and the, the base layer is Prima Packaging because they have their packaging in the shape of a tag already. So I just used that and then um, put the matching paper from my box on here from the Keller Kurtz Company. And then I went to my sewing machine, and I don't know if you can see that because it is a cream-colored um, thread that I used. And I just went around the edge, and I did do the sewed that together. And what next? Ugh. 
I did, the next step was I went around and that's it. <laughs> I took some of the Tim Holtz Distress Ink and Vintage Photo because absolutely everything has been um, distressed inked with that. Um, the dress form from the Tim Holtz die um, along with the little thread spool and button. Everything has been distressed with that same ink. Even the embossing powder here uh, for my sentiment. This is the Vintage Photo uh, distressing powder. And I did take some uh, Inca Gold and Silver and go around the frame because the frame was copper. And I kind of like how that turned out because I left some of the copper showing because it kind of goes with that vintage photo. And just wrap some twine. I did get this idea, by the way. I found a tag like this on Pinterest. And um, so even though there wasn't a tutorial with it, I did kind of copy the Pinterest um, tag. So that is where I got the inspiration for this, by the way. Um, back to this. Okay, so then um, I did take uh, three different laces. There's a little, can't hardly even see it, it's buried behind this one. But uh, there's a um, little purple, dainty purple lace right at the waist. Then over that is this uh, eyelet lace or trim that I used as a skirt. And then there's an underskirt um, of some different kind of lace here. This is a Prima Flower that I got in my Prima warehouse sale box, which I'll either have already posted the video or I'm getting ready to post the video of that, by the way, because it was an awesome deal. And um, I did use um, different kinds of paper for the base of the dress form and then the uh, top part as well. So that was just, you know, cutting my paper before I ran it through the dye machine and adhering the paper to the grunge board because this is grunge board and i did use um foam dots to give this some dimension um, behind this dress form so it's all popped up and i did wrap the uh, twine around my spool um, there's a little bitty uh, bow ribbon here with a little pearl accent in the center. Um, I did attach with another jump ring. I did attach the um, scissor charm. I just stuck the button there just, you know, because I'm working in threes here with the die. So, and what else? I did put another uh, sewing machine charm up here. I, um, having a hard time finding my words. <laughs> I, uh, dyed the white seam binding with a Lindy stamp gang. Let me pull it. I think I already showed this already. I think I may have used this on my box. It's been a while since I recorded that video. So, but anyway, it's the uh, Lindy stamp game. Creme brulee cream. Yeah, because I think I had a hard time pronouncing that when I did the uh, previous recording. So anyway, I used that to dye the seam binding. And I think I already mentioned that I used um, jump rings to attach the chain to it. And it is two-sided. So here is the back side. And again, it's just using the same paper from that same paper pad. I took a paper doily, cut it in half, and offset it here behind this other tag. And sprayed it as well with the same Lindy Stamp Gang color that I used for the seam binding here. This is another die cut from the book plate die. So a big tag that I cut out of grunge board. Again, some more of the paper on top. Um, just a little brad here in the center. And I just glued around the edges of this because I made this top part a pocket where I could just stuff a couple of little bitty tags that were cut from the paper. So again, this is the same purple um, lace that is actually tied around the waist of my dress form here. So that kind of ties in. And then just another little, you know, from the paper. I did do double-sided when I cut that out with some more of that seam binding right there. And that's that's it. So this is my tag and um, I'm just now starting to get into tag making so I really like the way this came out. I think this is this may be even my first tag. I'm not really sure. Um, so this is it and I've got to go now because I've got to get all this wrapped up and sent off to Neri. So thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you guys later.